the book of James, chapter 4, and verse 8. Draw nigh to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double minded. Bracket the Yahweh, 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 Call Halayim La Yahweh, Bashmi Al Shai, Bashmi Chakradash. Bless you, Yahweh, Bless you, Yahweh Shai. All praises to Yahweh and the name of Yahweh Shai and the name of Holy Spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the great millstone every well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all. Back at everyone that lets through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Lord willing, this video is edifying. Alright. And so, you know, without further ado, alright, as you can see, the scripture said, draw nigh to Yahweh. Okay. But when you draw nigh to the Lord, all right, when you take a step towards the Lord, he will take a step towards you. But when you come before the Lord, you must come correct. Okay, you can't just come before Yahweh Bashmel Shai, however you want to come before him. You know, you have to come correct, man. All right, because we're filthy. You know, we are filthy. We are we are unclean vessels. The scriptures say how all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. So how do we cleanse our ways? By taking heed to the words of the Lord. All right. And we're washed by the word. And ultimately, who is the word? The word is Yahweh Shai. Okay? Yahweh Shai, he is the word. John 15 and verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. All right? Which is these scriptures. Okay? As it says in Psalms. One nineteen in verse 9. Beth, but really it's Bath. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Okay, that's how you cleanse your ways by taking heed according to the Lord's word. All right, not by you know uh, getting washed up according to the flesh. All right, but getting washed up according to the spirit. I'll get another one. First Peter three, twenty one. Actually, outside of verse. 20, 1 Peter 3 and 20, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of the Most High waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was preparing, was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. And that's what we're going to see again. Like the Lord said, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. All right, verse 21, the like figure unto whom even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. But the answer of a good conscience toward Yahweh Bashmashah by the resurrection of Yahweh Mashiach. That's right. So we're resurrected through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmashah. Okay. And the baptism that we're going through is not the baptism of putting away the filth of the flesh, which is by what? Water. Okay. Because the main two cleansing agents is water and fire, man. All right. And this time the Lord, he's going to purge us by way of fire. Okay. Let's see if I can find a scripture like that real quick. Alright, that's a lot. Let me get another one. It's Matthew 3 and 11. It says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Okay? Luke 3 and 16. John answers, saying unto them, all I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the last of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Okay, so we're being tried through that fire, and that's what's all about coming nigh to Yahweh Shai, coming correct. Okay, not how you want to come. All right, now before I get this other precept, let me look this one up first. All right, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17. I'll start actually, yep, 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, 
and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. Okay. So he said it right there. Be separate. Touch not the unclean thing. All right. And ultimately, what's the most unclean thing that we can touch? The ways of this world. All right. It's full of abominations. Okay. It says Isaiah 52 and 11. Depart ye. Depart ye. Go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out in the midst of her. For in the Babylon the great. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. And what are we bearing? This truth. We are the Lord's vessels. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power, that's the excellency of the power may be of Yahweh Mashai and not of us. Okay? 2 Timothy 2 and 20. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver. Alright, it says, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, meaning you purge yourself from wicked works, from iniquity. Okay, like it's just talking about in verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of Yahweh Bashmer Shai stand is sure, having the seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone the name of the name of Mashayak, which Mashayak means anointed in the Hebrew, and depart from iniquity. I'm gonna skip back to verse 21 again. It's a heavy scripture. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work, man. That's right, okay? Because when it comes to this truth, the Lord, he's not going to drink out of an unclean vessel. Like it says, ye that be the, the vessels of the Lord, ye that bear the vessels of the Lord. Think about it, man. When you go to a restaurant, all right, or let's say you own a business, right? You own a business. And let's say your business is a restaurant, okay? When you go down to eat from your own business, do you want to drink from an unclean cup? So it's the same thing with us spiritually. The Lord is not trying to drink from our vessel, so to speak, with an unclean vessel, with an unclean cup. And Yahweh Shai even touched on that, okay? Let me get the scripture real quick. And that's why you don't be a hypocrite in this thing, because you might appear... You know, clean on the outside, but dirty on the inside, man. Okay? But this truth is being cleaned within and then cleaned without. Okay? But shit, you know, you would want the vessel to be clean on the inside at least. You know? This is uh, Matthew 23. And um, verse 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint in a nice and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law judgment mercy and faith these all you have to do and not to leave the other undone scriptures speak about partiality so if you clean the inside of the cup you better clean the outside too to the best of your abilities all right verse uh 24 ye blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel yeah because you have dudes they'll be over righteous about a gnat but they'll swallow a camel you know, they'll 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 get on you about not wearing fringes, but yet they're over here sit here and say that, you know, the book of Hebrews is not the word of the most high. Okay. Or you got other camps out there that strain at a gnat and swallow at a camel, man. Alright? I U I C I C P K. You know, here it is. Them camps that get on you supposedly about the truth, but yet go and promote taking the jab. All right, and I'm speaking directly about ISUPK, okay? IUIC, straining at the name, okay? Which that's very important. Here it is, that's very important, man. Just to strain at the name of your Ha Shmel Shah. All right? But yeah, you go ahead and, uh, you know, get a 501c3, man. Swallowing a, swallowing a camel, man. You know? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto the whitest sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity, man. Okay? That's the point on that right there. 
So pretty much the Lord is talking about purging ourselves, being clean on the inside and on the outside. And that we're going to be clean through this word and through these great fight of afflictions that we're going through and getting purged and tried in the fire. All right. So without further ado, let's get some more precepts, Lord willing. Joel chapter 2, starting at verse 12. Therefore also now see the Lord turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. And rend your heart, not your garments. And turn unto the Lord Yahweh your power, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord Yahweh your power. Yeah, and it said a meat offering and a drink offering, man. So what's a part of that offering, so to speak? Our bodies. We have to be disciplined over our bodies and glorify the Lord in our bodies. Because that's a part of our sacrifice. And that's a part of us going through the fire. Because this flesh is programmed to be wicked. So when you fight against the grain for to stand up against, you know, wickedness for good, you know, you overcome evil with good. All right. It's a fight. It's a fight. It's a, you know, it's a trial process, man. All right. Getting tried in the fire. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech just like a burnt offering. <laughs> okay. Just like a meat offering, so to speak. It's, those are synonymous. Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh Shemeshai, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto Yahweh Shemeshai, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh Shemeshai. And the word prove also goes back to being tried. Okay? Just like how you prove gold, you prove a sword, you put it in the fire. Okay? So same way, we have to be tried. But pretty much, like it says, offer your body as a living sacrifice. Metaphorically speaking, we're like a burnt offering to the Lord. Discipline. Okay. First Corinthians six, starting at verse uh, uh, Nineteen. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of Yahweh Shemeshai, and ye are not your own. We're not our own. We don't own these bodies. We're renting these bodies. So we have to glorify the Lord within our bodies. That's why the scriptures say that through the terror of the Lord we persuade men, because the Lord, as it was talked about in Joel the uh, second chapter, in the in the verses prior to verse twelve, it's talking about how the Lord is going to destroy America with ICBM nuclear missiles, and various other countries of the world are going to get hit with nuclear missiles, They're going to get hit with, uh, hit with laser beams from so-called UFOs, which are known as the chariots of God, the chariots of Israel. All right, you know World War Three, famine, pestilence, okay, cannibalism, all right, rape, robbery, home invasions, murder, cold-blooded. All right. Corruption, chaos to the whole world. All right, not just America alone. Esau's kingdom is finished. So, you know, rend your hearts with weeping, fasting, mourning, so on and so forth. Get tried through the fire because you don't want to get fired up by the missiles, man. Okay? This is uh, 1 Corinthians 6. And that's why it says, through the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. All right, because we all have to get, go before the judgment seat of Yahweh Shai, that every man may give account what he has done in his own body. Because why? We're renting this. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Mashiach, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Okay? Right. So you, your old man has to die off. You got to burn him off through the fire. Because... The old man is like dross. You ever you ever had, uh, you know, a, a gold chain, silver chain, and it gets dirty, all right? And you know it's hard to clean the stains off. Well, guess what? You gotta you gotta put it through the fire, and then it get the clean, purges away all the dross. Okay. So lock you. Second Corinthians 5 and verse 10, wherefore we must all appear before the judgment seat of Masiach, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto Yahweh Shemeshah, and our trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Okay? 
That's right. That's right. Isaiah 1 and 25, it says, And I will turn thy my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. And I will restore thy judges at the first and thy counsels at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. So we got to get purged. All right. The Lord said, The house of Israel has become dross unto me. All right. It's uh, Psalms 119 and 9, one, uh, 119 and 119. Thou put us away all the wicked of the earth like dross, therefore I love thy testimonies. Proverbs 25 and 4. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. All right. Isaiah 1 and 22 is talking about the nation of Israel. Thy silver has become dross, thy wine mixed with water. All right. So the Lord, look, he's saying what? I'll read it again. Isaiah 1 and 21. How is a faithful city becoming harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Okay? Yeah, the Lord's saying that's pretty much what Israel, Israel was full of righteousness at one point. Now Israel became a harlot spiritually. So we got to put off that old old man, the things of the flesh, because that's playing the harlot against the Lord. Just like we read back in the uh, book of Corinthians, about it said, glorify the Lord in your body. Prior to the verses, what did it say? It said that, you know, you don't want to join the members of the body of Yahweh Shai with the harlot. Okay? Spiritually, that's why the scripture talk about the elect saying what that these are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins as Revelation 14. All right, it says, Um, thy silver is become draws, thy wine makes of water, thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts and follow after rewards, they judge not the fatherless, neither do they cause, neither do the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty winner of Israel, I will. Ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. So the Lord's saying, look, he's going to get judgment on his adversaries and his enemies, man. Oh, the scriptures talk about the haters of God. All right. Most high God haters, man. And they're going to get, they're going to get um, purged by the fire. Romans 1 and 30. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors, of evil things, disobedient to parents. And this is talking about wicked people in the last days, man. All right. But also there's another one. So Psalms 81 and 15. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have been should have endured forever. Alright. And the Lord said that his anger is gonna burn with fire, man. Alright. This is Nahum chapter one. Verse uh us like it, that's numbers. But that's still a good one. And when the people complain, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. That's right. All right. A for a fire is kindled in mine anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, meaning all the way to the grave, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains, man. And that's the missiles. The missiles going to be able to do that. The missile is going to be able to burn through your bunker if the Lord allows it to. If you have a bunker on the soils of America, you're finished. <laughs> okay? You're finished. All right. This is Psalms 21 and 9. It says, um, Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. All right. Therefore the Lord heard this and was wroth, so a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger came up against Israel. All right. So the part of the Lord's anger is fire, man. This is Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Talking about the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire, man. And that's what Yahweh Shah is coming back to do. He said, what? I'm coming to kindle fire upon the earth. That's a part of the Lord's anger. Okay. The Lord said, I am coming to bring fire upon earth. What will I have already be kindled? Or if we paraphrase it. All right, Lamentations 4 and 11. The Lord hath accomplished his fury. He hath poured out his fierce anger and hath kindled a fire in Zion. He hath devoured the foundations thereof. All right. This is uh, Nahum 1 and 6. Who can stand before his indignation and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him. 
Zephaniah 3 and 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured in the fire of my jealousy, man. That's right. So pretty much, you know, hey, we got to get tried in the fire. Okay. And so pretty much you got to understand that when we do something wrong, that that kindles the anger in the Lord's sight. Now, the Lord is merciful and long suffering, but that's still an anger being kindled in his sight, so to speak. So how does it get purged out by fire? OK, and that's what it's really all about, man. We're going to get tried. And this is something that you probably hear on the regular because this is what it is. This is the condition of the battle that we have to fight all right but in the kingdom everything is going to be set back in perfect harmony but for right now since intemperance is at an all-time high we have to be even more temperate speaking to myself first and foremost the rock ecclesiastes 2 and 1 my son if thou come to serve the lord prepare thy soul for temptation all right yeah meaning what temptation meaning you're going to get attempted all right those spirits are going to try you Okay, but you have to stand your ground in the spirit. All right, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. All right, through the pulling down of strongholds of Yahweh Bashem al All right, so it's a spiritual fight, and we just have to keep our minds fixed upon the kingdom. All right, and stay on our purpose, a part of being the elect, Lord willing. Put on the qualities of the elect member, according to First uh, uh, Colossians 3 and 12. Have discipline with your walk and stay on your purpose all right so discipline qualities of the elect purpose remember those keys that's how you stand your ground in the spirit all right set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble yeah spiritually stand your ground you got to be able to hold your own weight man when you go through that fire it ain't gonna feel good but afterwards it's gonna feel good <laughs> okay why is that okay Hebrews chapter 12 and I'll start from the top wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us yeah going into what all right purging ourselves from the sins that easily beset us sins that you know that you could be on top of there's certain stuff where that's outside of our hands. All right. The fact that we're in captivity, that's outside of our hands. But there's certain things that we can be on top of to the best of our abilities. All right. Like trying to eat, you know, lawfully. OK, at least knowingly and not being, you know, if you're ignorant to it, that's one thing. But knowingly trying to eat lawful, you know, um, you know, just certain things like that. OK, being brotherly, you know, tapping into the spirit. Like there are certain things where the Lord gives us. Uh, a form of power over it, if you will all right tangible if you will you know soul to the spirit pretty much okay this is looking unto Yahweh, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of the most high yeah Yahweh, he despised the shame he pretty much counted the shame as nothing he looked at the shame like it was nothing in comparison to the reward that was laid up for him all right. That's why the scriptures call it a light affliction. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 16, for which cause we faint not. Yeah. Going into what? Standing your ground. You can't faint. Hold your own weight. Endure. Be made hard. But it says, but though our outer man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Yeah. It's all about building up the spirit because your, your body is going to corrupt regardless. It's not even meant for us to keep these bodies. So our body is technically dying every day. But our spirit, we want it to be quickened every day to be made alive every day and that comes with growth standing your ground in the spirit discipline putting on the qualities of the elect and remembering your spiritual purpose for your how about all right try to tap into your lot you know try to tap into you know the things pleasing in the sight of the lord more and more all right it says second corinthians 4 like yahweh i said i always do that which is pleasing in the lord's sight and Yahweh Shai still went through the fire. So Yahweh Shai was sent, went through the sufferings that we have to as well. It says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, 
working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Yeah, this is a light affliction that we're going through. All right, it's just for a moment. It's not. It's nothing. Uh, it's nothing that we can't handle. Okay, because the Lord, the scriptures say that the Most High, He is faithful, and He will not tempt us above what we are able to bear, but will, with the temptation, make a way for us to escape. Roughly paraphrasing, the scriptures all say that the Lord not know how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the just into the day of to the day of punishment. Roughly paraphrasing, man. So, pretty much, the Lord, He gonna give you the battles that you can go through. Everybody's test is uh, molded for their skill set, so to speak. All right, so you just have to understand that and endure it. Second Corinthians four and verse uh, eighteen. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. All right, pretty much meaning, you know, we look for the things that Yahweh Bashmal Shai. We look for the kingdom. We're not we're not setting our affections on this earthly place, man. We're setting our affections on things above. Okay. On the spirit realm. All right. Because the spirit realm can be seen if the Lord gives you the eyes to see it. If not, then you can't see it. All right. And also, it's the mystery. The Lord has certain things hit up for our mystery, you know, that we're waiting for. Okay. But, um, we'll go back to Sirach 2. Lord willing. Verse. Th three cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at that last end and Sirach 25 and 12, 12 is what it tells you what it means to cleave unto the Lord faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him all right it said and fear is the obtaining of his love all right if you fear the Lord that means you you know you're showing love to him because you're not making him mad okay and fearing the Lord is keeping his ways to the best of your ability okay This is uh, Sirach Ecclesiastes and 19 and 18. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him, and wisdom attaineth his love. But the scriptures say what? Fear is the beginning of wisdom. Okay. Sirach Ecclesiastes 2, starting at verse 4. Whatsoever is brought up upon thee, take cheerfully. Right. Because you just read that scripture. Remember we read a little earlier how the people complained and it pissed off the Lord. All right. And that's just something for myself too. Really, whatsoever is brought upon us, take cheerfully, man. And that takes true, true mental strength in order to take something that you don't find joyous, so to speak, cheerfully, man. But ultimately, when you look at the bigger picture, you know, you should take it cheerfully because it could be so much worse. Be grateful that the Lord is even dealing with you. Like the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Like he said to the Apostle Paul. Because Apostle Paul was praying that the Lord would take away a certain thing away from him, you know, but the Lord didn't take it away. Yeah, I wish I prayed that the Lord took away that cup, you know, but it, but the Lord's will had to be done. So pretty much, you know, our Lord's grace is sufficient for us, man. So really learn to be more grateful. And it's going to it's going to have a positive effect on your spirit, too, when you look at things brighter and you be more grateful because. It, it puts you on a high, it makes you operate on a higher frequency in the spirit. All right. Sirach Ecclesiastes 2 and uh, verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, man. That's right. So through the adversities that we're going through, through, through the trials of our faith, that's how we're being accepted. That's how we're being made acceptable. Okay. It says, believe in him and he will help thee. Order thy way aright and trust in him. All right, and that's and that's going into having that faith, man. So you got to just trust in the Lord. All right, because the Lord got us, and I recommend you know you read the rest of that chapter. All right, on your own if the Spirit you know is on you. All right, this is Judas chapter eight and um, verse twenty-four. Now therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend on uh, upon us. And the sanctuary of the house and the altar rest upon us. Okay. Moreover, let us give thanks to the Lord Yahweh, our power, which trieth us, even as he did our fathers. Okay. More, it says, so it said, let us give thanks, man. Not to complain. All right. And that goes back to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Okay. Hebrews chapter 12. 
and verse uh, two, I'll read it again. Looking unto Yahweh, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Most High. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be wearied and faint in your minds. Okay, right. So if we feel like we're getting weak, think about what Yahweh had to endure. Verse four, ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. And you got to think about it. Yahweh Shai, he went through a lot. And he was able to get through it. So his scriptures say that, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So Yahweh Shai, he had the most heaviest portion. Matter of fact, the scriptures say that the more, most high didn't give him the spirit by measure. So you have to understand the type of afflictions that he had to go through in the flesh. And we're being made suffering, we're being made partakers of his sufferings, and our Razzah we endure will be made partakers of his glory. Because they pierced him, they spat on him, they kicked him, they slapped him, they punched him, they crucified him, they drove nails through his hands, through his feet, they pricked his body, man. Alright? They beat him so bad, bro. They beat him worse than uh 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 Nat. They beat him worse than um man, what's that Jake's name, man? Man, if you how about much I put it in my spirit. But they beat him worse than that Jake boy who uh was accused of, I guess, like trying to touch an Edomite woman or flirt with an Edomite woman. They beat the Lord worse than him. And he still endured it. He knew what he was getting into, but he still endured it for the joy that was set before him. So hey, we gotta be ready to suffer the same. That's why every brother should have that edge about yourself. Some way to keep you hardened, some way to keep you, you know, keep you know, keep you like a man. Go through adversity. That's what helps build up your manliness. All right. Hebrews 12. You know, whether you take a cold shower, whether you fast more often, whether you exercise, you know, whether you whatever you know, makes you tap into that masculine energy. That's a part of having an edge. Hey, the scriptures say the Lord told Adam, "By the sweat of thy brow." You know, so through us being diligent by the sweat of our brow, putting in work, so to speak, going through that adversity, you know, that's how we going to eat, so to speak, man. All right. And it's literal, but it can apply spiritually, too. All right. Verse four says, ye have not resisted unto blood striving against sin. Right. Yeah. Meaning what? The Lord ain't kill you. You ain't dead. And even if you had to die for the truth, it is what it is. But at least while you alive, you just know you ain't dead. You could be dead. Okay. Call Psalms 118 and 18. All right. And the elect are going to be tried. And they're going to go through the fire, man. They're going to endure. Abarat we be a part of that number. Psalms 118 and 18. The Lord hath chastened me sore, but he have not given me over unto death, man. That's right. The scriptures say, He that overcome shall not have part of the second death, shall not taste of the second death. You got to overcome this world. Revelation 2 and 11. He that can hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death, man. That's right. And what else will you get when you overcome? What's the second death, first and foremost? The second death is ISBM nuclear missiles. You don't want to be missile food? Well, endure. And as well, what else are you going to inherit if you overcome? It's Revelation 2 and verse 25. But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. Yahweh I said it. He that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. We got to hold fast to this truth. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall be broken to shivers, even as I received them my father, man. That's right. So the Lord told us we're going to get slaves as our inheritance. If we endure, man. Here it is. We working for somebody, but soon people are going to be working for us. All right. Not going to have to lift a finger if we don't want to, you know, or if the Lord don't want us to ultimately. But um, let me continue. Let's go back to let's go back to Hebrews. All right. It says. Verse five. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you. As unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. 
if you endure chastening, the most I deal with you is with sons, for a son is he whom the father chasteneth not. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons, man. That's right. And when you look at it spiritually, Deuteronomy 23 tells you that a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. So if you want to enter into the Lord's congregation, you got to get tried. You have to be disciplined. You got to go through that fire. And most of all, stand your ground in the spirit. Okay. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Hebrews 12 and verse uh, 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? Right. If your parents beat you when you were a child because you were bad, you grow up and you're like, dang, I'm glad my mom beat me. I'm glad my dad beat me. You give your parents reverence. Shall we not much more be in subjection and take uh, spiritual whoopings? Which can be literal too. Don't get it twisted. The most high will really jack you up. <laughs> the most high will put you to death if you play. You know? This thing is in this this truth isn't a joke, man. You gotta really walk on eggshells when it comes to the Lord, man. Cause you never wanna be presumptuous and take it too far and think that you know you you're okay. Okay. The Lord could kill you. Painfully. Painfully, 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 man. Painfully, man. I couldn't even tell you a fraction. All right? Like, you know how people say uh, you don't even know the half? Well, guess what? I myself couldn't even tell you the fraction, man. The Lord is terrible in his doings toward the children of men. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power, man. It's dreadful. Okay? It says, For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. It says, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Yeah, so the Lord, he chastises us, he chastises us, he puts us through the fire for our own profit. Okay. He says. So let me get the scriptures on that. Psalms 119 and 7. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments, man. Yeah. Okay. So when we learn the righteous judgments of the Lord, which comes through the correction, through the chastisement, through the rebuke, so on and so forth. All right. That's the point on that right there. That's going to make us, you know, understand the ways of the Lord and praise him with uprightness of heart. That's us having those clean vessels. Psalms 119 and 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. That's right. All right. That's the point. Okay. Let's go back to here. It says, Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Yeah, so it might not feel good, but afterward... When you heal spiritually because the Lord, he breaks you down, but he builds you back up. Same thing with your muscles when you're working out. You break up your muscles, you tear them, and then they grow back stronger and bigger most of the time. Okay? Same thing in this truth, in the spirit. All right? And the scriptures talk about how bodily exercise profiteth little. But godliness is profitable, righteousness is profitable unto all things, man. All right, this is Hebrews 12 and verse 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, man. All right, yeah. Meaning, strengthen yourself, man. Okay? Stop complaining. Be grateful. All right? Verse 13. And make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Okay? Right. So you got to heal up your members through the Spirit of the Lord. All right, the scriptures talk about the wisdom of Solomon 16, verse 12. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. Yeah, medicine can only do so much. It says, but thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things, for thou hast power of life and death. Thou leadest the gates of hell and bringest up again. Okay, that's the point right there. So the Lord, he causes life or death. He heals and he wounds. As the scriptures say. Oh, that's Job 5. I get that. 
Because that also goes into what? Despising not the chastening of the Lord. Job 5 and verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom Yahweh Shemeshach corrected. So really, you should be happy when the Lord corrects you. The scriptures talk about how the disciples or the apostles were counted in joy. Job 5 and verse 17. Behold, happy is the man whom Yahweh Shemeshach corrected. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. For he maketh sore and bindeth up. He woundeth and his hands make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Meaning what? Through the Lord chastising us, purging us. He's going to deliver us during the times of trouble. The six troubles represents Jacob's trouble. That seventh trouble, no evil is going to touch us because that seventh trouble represents the seventh trumpet, which represents the completion of destruction and judgment of the Lord upon Esau Edom's kingdom, which will be by way of the ICBM nuclear missiles, man. Okay? And that is going to lead to pretty much um, nuclear warfare, man. All right? And the elect are going to be beamed up in the chariots prior to the missiles hitting ground zero. Okay? Verse 20. In famine he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. All right, you got to think about it. How, how crazy or how tough and hardcore of a person do you have to be to laugh at famine? You got to be a man of the Lord. You got to have the toughness of your how about me I'm shy to laugh at famine. And that takes going through the chastisement. That takes hardening up your spirit, man. Okay, you know, you see, ever seen them Ammonites or the Moabites, whatever, you know, they... they they be punching bricks and kicking steel and all this other stuff like that. Those men put their bodies through chastisement, through adversity. And then look, they're able to do crazy things and that's just in the flesh. You know, they might be tapped in on the left hand side too, you know, you know, but at the same time, you gotta think about it. You know, they'll be doing knuckle push-ups and punching you know, things to get their knuckles hard, so on and so forth. But that's what, it, they're breaking their body down, but it's growing back stronger. Just like the gym analogy, you see? So, but guess what? You're being made hardened, all right? It says, at destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, neither shalt, be afraid of, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. Because in Jacob's trouble, all right, that's, another, that's gonna be another judgment of the Lord. The beast of the earth, famine, the sword, destruction, okay? Martial law, troops, all right, so on and so forth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. So those are part of the perks of being on your purpose with your Ha'abash Shai and, you know, enduring the affliction because that's that's going to, you know, bring blessings in return. Okay, let's so go to the next one. Go back to Judith. Judith 8, verse... Uh, 25, I'll read it again. Moreover, let us give thanks to the Lord, Yahweh, our power was tried us, even as he did our fathers. Remember what things he did to Abraham and how he tried Isaac and what happened to Jacob in Mesopotamia of Syria. And when he kept the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, for he have not tried us in the fire as he did them for the examination of their hearts. Neither hath he taken vengeance on us, but the Lord doth scourge them that come near unto him to admonish them. Man. That's right. So when you come near unto the Lord, you draw nigh to Yahweh Shemeshai, he'll draw nigh to you, but you got to come correct. You must come correct. The scriptures say in Ecclesiastes 5 and 1, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of Yahweh Bashmashai, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Okay? So, pretty much, I'm going into what? When you come before the Lord, when you come before the temple of Yahweh Bashmashai, keep your foot. Watch your step, man. Don't just try to run up on the Lord. Like, like you just like, no, be more ready to listen and be in, and be instructed because listening takes um, listening takes suffering. All right. Because to suffer means to wait or to have patience means to suffer, so to speak. So when you listen to something that that means you're going through that suffering, so to speak. And that's the same thing. When we listen to the words of the Lord, we go through the righteous sufferings. We get tried. All right. And, not, and don't give a sacrifice of fools, meaning you're quick to speak or you could be quick to do something stupid. OK. You know, 
when you come before the Lord, humble yourself down. Be ready to listen to where you need to be corrected. Like sure said, I will stand upon my watch until I am approved. All right. And then, you know, you execute. Okay. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Okay, right. So we have to go through the temptations. All right. And when we're tried, guess what? If we endure, it's going to lead it's going to lead up to us having victory. Okay? And that's the thing. When you come into this thing, you're going to be tried. The spirit of the Lord is going to try you. Same way the Lord did Job. So Ecclesiastes 31 verse 10, who have been tried thereby and found perfect. All right? Then let him glory, who might offend and hath not offended. Or done evil and have not done it. His good shall be established and the congregation shall declare his alms, man. That's right. It says, so pretty much who have been tried thereby and found perfect. We getting tried in the fire, our brothers out, we be found perfect, man. All right, because there's a reward for that. All right. And this is just the way the walk is set up. Acts chapter 14 and verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. That's what it's all about. Satan want to take you out the faith, but you got to continue in the faith. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. That's right. All right. Matter of fact, look at the scripture. Psalms 34 and 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord Yahweh Rashmi Abashai delivereth him out of them all, man. That's it. That's it right there. Okay. Hebrews 10 and 32. And like the scriptures say, Yahweh Shai was a man acquainted with grief. So you got to understand, a man being acquainted with grief, meaning you're pretty much always sorrowful, so to speak. So knowing that. If you're acquainted with grief, if we're sighing and crying, if we're the ones mourning, we're in the house of mourning, you have to learn to keep a strong mind. And the best way to keep a strong mind when you're in the house of mourning is to keep a grateful, gratitude outlook, uh, you know, spiritual perspective. All right. Hebrews 10 and 32, it says, but call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. Okay? Right. So, pretty much, when you first come in this thing, when you first get illuminated, you first get enlightened, all right, through the, through the spirit of power of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, all right, you, and, you go through a great fight of afflictions, man. When you first come in this truth, the Lord proves you because why? You know, you be, you, it's like, you know, when you first come in the truth, you know, you still get tried... You know, pretty much every day you're in the truth. But especially when you first come in, you go through that trial period because, you know, you have a lot of filth on you, man. It's a daily cleansing of ourselves. It's a daily washing of ourselves spiritually. Okay. So, you know, the Lord chips away all that wickedness. And that's you going through that fire. All right. Especially when you first come in the faith. All right. Revelation 3, verse 18. It says... I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Yeah, the Lord, he only want to get gold tried in the fire, man. He ain't messing with nothing else. The Lord got standards, <laughs> okay? You best believe that. It says, That thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. White represents purity, man. Okay? It says that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, meaning your spiritual nakedness. Because when you don't have this truth, this truth is like into a garment. So when you don't have this truth, you're spiritually naked. Okay? It says, and anoint thine eyes with the eye salve, all right, that thou mayest see. Yeah, you're being enlightened. Your eyes are being enlightened through the spirit. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, and be zealous, therefore, and repent. Yeah, so you got to be zealous. And to, to when you go into the word zeal, it means jealousy. All right? And a part of having jealousy 
is having the anger of, of fire, having a vibrational thing of fire, all right? The aura, of, the aura of jealousy is like fire. This is Psalms 19 and 8. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. All right. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 8. So when your eyes are enlightened to this truth, you understand, you know, the uh, crown laid up for the endurance of it. Okay. Let's get this next one. <laughs> First Peter. Chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, well, I'll start at verse 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Right. So we're going through manifold temptations. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Right. Okay. So, but we're supposed to greatly rejoice that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shammashiach, whom having not seen, ye love him, and whom though ye now see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with unspeakable and full of glory. All right? Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, man. All right? And that's a part of us being patient in this thing. Verse 10, and of which there's, there's salvation... The prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, man. So, yeah, we're in the time of the prophets. The same thing that the prophets wrote are being fulfilled right before our very eyes. Okay? So, we have to endure because we're almost at the end of this thing, man. Okay? But let's talk about the trial of our faith. All right? Being much more precious than that of gold, man. Okay? It's a couple thousand dollars just to get an ounce of gold. And that thing is corruptible. So how much more, you know, our faith being more precious than that. All right. Second Ezra. Uh, Sixteen. And a part of that trial, a part of us being made and hardened, is because the Lord's preparing us for the day of battle, the day of war, which is the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. And ultimately, when you think about it, you know, you got to be made hard. You got to be able to endure hardness as a good soldier because we're getting ready to go into war. Jacob's trouble is going to be a time of war, man. Scriptures talk about a time of trouble the world has never seen before. That Michael, the archangel, which is the archangel of war, is going to have to stand up. Okay? There's going to be needed. We're going to need heavy divine intervention in these times, man. All right? Angels manifesting themselves in the physical realm, you know, delivering us. Yahweh Shemeshai delivering us, us calling upon his name, him lifting up a standard, him giving us spiritual powers, him giving us deliverance and protection and abundance. All right, so on and so forth. Abba Radizah, Abba Shemeshai. Now, all right, let's get, let's, let's, let's crack into this. Second Azure 16 and 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. And they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols. What's that burning wrath of a great multitude? Revelation 12 and 12. The devil has come down unto you having a great wrath. Because what? He know if he have but a short time, man. Esau trying to set up his new world order. Part of that, him coming down with that great wrath is them, is them uh, martial law troops, man. Them different FEMA troops and UN troops, Gurkha troops, and so on and so forth, man. Mercenaries and assassins. All right, to pretty much uh, strong arm their agenda over the world. And what are they going to do? They're going to snatch away certain brothers and sisters, and a lot of people are going to be getting thrown into FEMA camps, and a lot of people are going to be getting beheaded, put to death. All right, you see what they're doing over there to Issachar in the Northern Kingdom, in those borders, you know, throwing them in cages. That's coming to America. All right? They're just using Jake as a test subject, so to speak. But that's going to come to America. Whether you be uh, uh, middle class, upper class, lower class, if you don't adhere to, to their society, so to speak, you're going to be made like a slave. Okay? 
you're gonna be you're gonna be wishing you you were at least lower class the type of way that this world is about to be coming in and they're gonna try to feed people things offered into idols which that rfid chip which is the mark of the beast okay it says and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and a reproach and trodden underfoot yeah so all the sellouts all right you're going to be had in derision okay and if you want to sell out you want to go ahead and comply this esau still going to mow you down okay but there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the lord it's going to be a great uprising of the government man upon the whole nation of israel they shall be like mad men sparing none but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the lord esau is going to have a slaughter fest man scripture talk about how the lord is going to pretty much awake them that are skillful to destroy esau is skillful to destroy his blessing is the sword look what he's doing with this jab that's being skillful to destroy look what he's done to various other countries running them over taking over the government you know bombing them bombing his own u.s soils uh, uh, to, uh, what is it? Uh, Black Wall Street. Look into that. All right, Esau bomb Black Wall Street. That's being skillful to destroy. Esau gonna be bombing niggas again during Jacob's trouble. Come through with their helicopters, bomb a Jake neighborhood, man. That's the type of shit we about to be on, man. Okay. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Yeah, Esau gonna be home invading. There's gonna be home invasions, whether it be from Esau. Or some other wicked ass Babylonian. Alright. But you're not going to be able to trust anybody in that day. Even your neighbors. That you once thought, that you once thought were civilized people. Okay. As it tells you in 2nd Ezra 15 and 19. That a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. Alright. And they shall, shall go through his house with a sword. For lack of bread and for great tribulation. Man. People are going to be hungry out here man. Eating their own children. That's the type of time we about to be on. So we have to be made hardened for these times, man. Okay? Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as gold in the fire, man. Yeah, so we got to get tried as the gold in the fire, and it's going to be evident that we've been tried as the gold in the fire in that day because we're going to stand out like a righteous sore thumb, man. Because the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Bashmael Shai is going to be the stability of our times, man. 2nd uh, Ezra 16 and 74. Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh Bashmael Shai is your guide, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord. Power. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves, man. That's it right there. Because why? You don't want to get left behind. I know I don't. All right, and guess what? We gonna be made perfect, man. All right, and everything that we're going through is gonna be well worth it because it's gonna be like, it's gonna be greater than us winning an NBA championship, man. All that hard work we put in through the spirit, we gonna reap the benefits, man. The Lord gonna bless us with power, man. Isaiah 13 and 12. I will make a man more precious there than fine gold. Even a man in the golden wedge of old fear. Yeah, the. Ophir is the most precious gold known to mankind, okay? And the Lord said we're going to be made more precious than that, man, okay? And guess what? These women, they're going to see our value. And being a man of the Lord is going to be high commodity during the times of trouble. Isaiah 32, starting at verse 1, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. That's referring to, you know, Yahweh Bashmel Shai and the elect. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. Yeah, a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind. Pretty much a man is going to be shelter. A man is going to be succor. All right, for you women, you're going to get back in order. You're going to get back in subjection. And you're going to be under your man who is under Yahweh Shai, who is under the Most High, man. And everything's going to be in its proper vibration and order. All right. That's why the scriptures say seven women shall take hold of one man. Isaiah 4 and 1. And that day, talking about during the times of trouble. All right. Because if, you, if you're a pretty woman during Jacob's trouble, your ass is grass. Okay. Because <laughs> you're going to get ravished, man. All right. Raped to death. 
All right? Destruction, man. Lest you repent. Isaiah 4 and 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach, man. Okay? That's the point on that right there. Okay? So, you're going to have women who are going to be in subjection during the time of Jacob's trouble. They're going to be like, listen, you don't got to feed me. You don't got to clothe me. Because that's a part of the duties of having a wife. But you got to think about it. <laughs> All hell is about to be breaking loose. These women are going to be like, shit, I don't care if you don't take me out on a date. I don't care if you even buy me food. I don't care if you even buy me clothes. Just let me, just let me be your woman. All right? That's the type of status the Lord is about to have his men on. Verse 2, In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. All right? And that is definitely going to happen in the kingdom. Verse 3, And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. And that's talking about the elect, the remnant. Okay? Even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Yeah, those written in the Lamb's book of life. Verse 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst of thereof, by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning. Okay? That's it right there. So, that goes to show you what, man? That we're getting tried through that fire. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. Yeah. And that's what the chariots can do. They're a cloud by day and they're a pillar of fire by night. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from rain. Yeah. Going back to Isaiah 32. Because ultimately the Lord, he is our covert from the storm, from the, from the heat, from the rain, so on and so forth. But the Lord is going to have it set up to where we're going to be that for these women who he's going to, you know, bless us with. Same way how Yahweh Shai was blessed with women, spiritually speaking about the elect. All right. Job 23 and 10. But he knoweth the way that I take when he have tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Yeah. We're going to be tried to come forth as gold, man. The Lord knows our end. The scriptures talk about he has given us an expected end. Okay. So we should rejoice. Isaiah 48 and 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction, man. Okay, that's right. So we're getting chosen out of the furnace of affliction. That's how we're being made purged before the Lord. 1 Peter 4, starting at verse 1. For as much then as Mashiach have suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. That's right. So part of suffering in the flesh... Is having discipline over the flesh, man. Okay? Sowing to the spirit. And skip down to verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoicing as much as ye are partakers of Mashiach's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. All right? Yeah, as it tells us in Romans 8 and 17, you know, we're suffering with Yahweh Shai, that we may be glorified with him. Also, 1 Peter 5 and 1, the elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Mashiach and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed, man. Okay. Yeah. And that's So we we want to follow in the same steps because why? Yeah. Uh, Apostle Paul said, be followers of me, even as I am, you have a shy. And Apostle Paul, he was a part of the church. But guess what? Peter, he's the head of the church. So we have to be followers of uh, Peter as well. Because Peter is also a follower of Yahweh Shai. So he was a suffering. He was, he was, he had partaker of the Lord's sufferings. He's going to be partaker of the Lord's glory. Yahweh Shai said it himself in Luke 20, uh, I believe it's uh, Luke 28 or 22. Luke 22. And um, verse 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me. That you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So you go through that suffering, you go through the temptations, you go through the trial. You're going to go through the glory with the Lord as well. And the Lord says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desire to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Yeah, so Satan, he wants to sift us out the faith. But what? But I have prayed for thee that thy faith 
fail not yeah so that's what it's all about it's all about keeping the faith man and the best way to keep the faith is to keep a positive vibration and righteousness to yourself okay that's the best way to keep the faith i pray for thee that faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren man that's right okay all right now um a lot getting tried man okay also Romans is Romans 8 and 17 and if children then heirs heirs of Yahweh Bashmashai and joint heirs of Mashiach if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together for I reckon that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us all right yeah it's a light affliction because the Lord is about to bless us, man, greatly. If we endure in this thing. Abba Rath is how we do. All right. Hebrews, the second chapter also talks about that, that our salvation is being made perfect through the captain of, suf captain of sufferings. Okay. So just like Yahweh had to suffer, we have to suffer too. Okay. Mr. Rock Ecclesiastes 6, and verse 21. She will lie upon him. As a mighty stone of trial, and he will cast him from her ere it be too long. Talking about the wisdom, talking about the spirit of the Lord. It's a mighty stone of trial. But you don't want to be weak and cast her from her, cast her from you. Scriptures talk about um, you know, cast not away our confidence, roughly paraphrasing, which our confidence is through the fear of the Lord, and fear is the beginning of wisdom. Okay. So you have to hold fast unto this wisdom, unto this wisdom of the Lord. Because wisdom is going to take you through that trial. Because remember, you have a lot of filth on you. So you got to get purged even more than if you were seasoned in this thing, so to speak. Because not saying you're not going to get purged while you're seasoned in this thing too. Because as long as we're in these bodies, we're going to constantly need to be tried. Because these bodies are meant to go off. So the Lord is proving us. All right. But nonetheless. Okay. You know, when we get the new bodies, we're not going to have to go through that. But right now, with this filth on us, this filth of the world that can bewitch us, so on and so forth. Because this body, ultimately this body can be seduced. All right. And that's the problem of this body. It can be seduced. So keeping an edge about yourself, tapping more into the spirit than into the flesh is less likely to be less likely of chances of being seduced by the ways of wickedness. All right, this is Rock Ecclesiastes 4 and 17, and it tells you about that wisdom of Psalm in the fourth chapter, how that the, be the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest, meaning that the, wit the bewitching of this world, the wickedness of this world can obscure or darken, you know, having an honest report, having an honest spirit. Okay, but the Yahweh Shai pray for his elect that the Lord will not take them from, from the world. So we're still here in the world. We still have to operate within this realm, but we're being kept back from the evil of it. Okay, so our Ecclesiastes, that's 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 a part of the benefits of being within the trials of the Lord. Okay, and just like if you play for a football team, you get the perks of uh, you know getting the whole gear, the workout gear, the shoes, the cleats, you know, the backpack, the hoodie with your number on it, you know, so on and so forth. You're getting that glory of being on the team, so to speak. But, you know, you got to go through the sufferings. You got to go through the practices. You got to go through the games. You got to go through having a sore body, learning the playbook, you know, practicing the play, so on and so forth, man. Okay? You know, so it's, it's, a, it's about the spirit behind the scenes, you know? That's, that's the trial process. Sirach Ecclesiastes 4, verse 17. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him. And torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws, man. That's right. That's what's going to happen. All right. It says, then will she return the straight way unto him and comfort him and shew him her secrets. But if he go wrong, she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. Yeah. What's a part of going wrong from wisdom? Giving up on the Lord. Because when you give up on the Lord, that's ultimately you saying that your way is better than his. So you're casting wisdom away from you because she's a mighty stone of trial. Because our hearts are being tried and examined every day. 
sometimes your flesh might win and you might be, you know, feeling lazy or whatever. Oh, I'm tired. I can't do this because I'm tired or whatever. You know, that's a trial right there. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever the case might be. But it's all about enduring in this thing. All right. Because sometimes you're going to get tired. Sometimes you're going to feel weak. But that's when you remember you have a shot and what he went through. He was 12 and 3. But the ultimate no-no is giving up. Okay. That's a part of having discipline. Second Ezra 6, starting at verse socket. Second Ezra 7 and verse 6. There's also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. This second Ezra 7 and um, verse 3. It says, And I said, Speak on my power. Then said he unto me, The sea is set in a wide place that it might be deep and great. But the but and but the case, but put the case, the entrance were narrow. And like a river, yes, yeah, so in order to get to that wide, deep sea where all the treasures are, were at, you know, the innumerable multitude of fishes and so on and so forth, all the glory of the depths of the sea, you got to go through that narrow river, so to speak. So that's us going through that narrow and straight gate, Yahweh spoke about. It says, but the case of the entrance were narrow like as and like a river. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? Yeah, so if we want to be like Aquaman, have rule over the sea, all right, and I'm speaking literal, because the Lord said that we're going to have dominion over the fish, the fowls, the beasts of the field, so on and so forth. So Aquaman going to be some real life kingdom stuff, man. But if we want to have rule over it, we got to have that discipline. We got to go through the fire. Okay. It says, um, verse six. It's like you. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it? If he went out through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? There is also another thing, and that's the thing too. You got to be faithful over a few things so that you could be made ruler over many, like how I said. Well done, that good and faithful servant. You have to be a faithful servant. You got to be loyal to the Lord. Okay. You know that's the thing. You could quit Esau's job and go work somewhere else, but you can't you can't quit the Lord's job and go work somewhere else because he's the only power. All right. It's second Ezra seven. And um, verse six, there is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and it's set in a dangerous place to fall like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. Yeah, you're being purged. You're being cleansed. And one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. If this city were now given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? And I said, it is so, Lord. Then he said, he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. Okay? Because why? Verse 11. Because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was the decree... Then was decreed that now is done. Okay, so pretty much like we was mentioning earlier in the lesson, through the sweat of thy brow, when Adam went off, then the decree of the Lord came forth. Okay, it says, then were the entrance of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are few and evil, full of perils and very painful. And that's just the way life is. But you got to learn to endure it. You got to learn to love the sufferer. For the entrance of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. Yeah. Because that's the way the Lord intended it to be. And that's what it's going to go back to because the Lord is going to force us to be righteous. Okay. He's going to put his laws in our inward parts. And it all started with Yahweh Shai's sacrifice. Okay. Through the grace and mercy of the Most High Yahweh. All right. Now it says, um. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things they can never receive those things that are laid up for them right so pretty much you gotta when you come into this thing you gotta be ready to put in work purified, purified made through the fire Strucker ecclesiastes 6 and uh verse 19 come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth so Ecclesiastes 6, starting at verse 18. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up, so shall thou find wisdom till thine old age. Yeah, pretty much meaning when you come into this thing as a youth, you stay into it even when you grow older in the spirit. Okay? Verse 19. And you got to gather instruction. And that comes with listening. Okay? 
being obedient, submitting yourself to the spirit. Verse 19, come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth, and wait for her good fruits, for thou shalt not toil in much laboring about her, but thou shalt eat of her fruits right soon. Okay, right. So when you come into this thing, you're going to reap the benefits of the wisdom of the Lord very soon. It's not like you got to wait two weeks to get paid by Esau's paycheck. You see what I'm saying? And the Lord, he's going to reward us, man. Because we only have to endure but a moment. It's a light affliction, as the scriptures say. All right. Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. Many shall be purified, like Yahweh said, white raiment. White represents purity. And made white. And tried, tried through the fire. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Yeah, the wicked is not going to be able to understand this truth. But the wise are going to understand this truth, and they're going to repent. They're going to be purified. They're going to be tried. They're going to be made white. So that's really the point, you know. Lord willing, this video is edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Bashim, Yahweh, Double honors to those and apostles of great blessing that were well, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and the Baba Ball. When you draw nigh to the Lord, prepare your soul for those that trial. So that when you come near to the Lord, He's going to admonish you, He's going to scourge you. But endure it. Stand your ground in the Spirit that you may be come forth. More precious than fine gold, even the golden wedge of Ophir. Shalom and a Baba Ball. All praise to Yahweh, Shemeshai, and the Holy Spirit.